All right. Well, we're really excited to be here. It's been a, a long journey, the whole six months of it, uh, with the Procore folks. And uh, we just wanted to share a little bit of our, our approach to technology. So we got a little video here. It's kind of like a commercial. <laughs> The fundamental thing that makes Mortensen unique is this passionate drive for continuous improvement and innovation. There are three fundamental revolutions that are happening in our industry right now. One is the integration of design, supplier, and subcontractor. Secondly, the adaptation of manufacturing techniques, of being able to prefabricate sub-assemblies off-site deliver them just in time, and making that construction site a place of final assembly. And thirdly, using technology tools that really enable us to effectively implement the change of both integration and manufacturing techniques. Taking the ideas that came from the ground up, from the project teams that wanted a better solution. Integrated Delivery Advancement Team, or the IDAT, is our group within the company that pulls together our team members in a think tank to really look at the future of the industry, new tools, new approaches that we could use to improve project outcomes and to improve the customer experience. And now with sustainable focus, we're focused on what is the impact of the facility in the place we're building it, and what is the total footprint of that building over a 50-year window. By bringing technology and sustainability together, Mortensen stands at the forefront of the engineering and construction industry's revolution. We've approached technology and how important it is to help us drive value to our customers. Um, so in terms of our organization, we're a family-owned business, 60 years strong. Um, our company is growing tremendously right now in terms of acquiring new talent, new types of projects. Uh, entering new business like energy storage and infrastructure and, and other uh, new business sectors that are, are new to us and new to the industry. Um, we've, we've been known to, to build complex projects. And uh, it sounds great, yeah, it's building really complex projects, Disney Concert Hall, Denver Art Museum, the U.S. Bank Stadium. Um, and we were only able to really build that, not because we're cool and we use the best technology. It starts with the partnerships that we make with our customer with our design partners, our trade partners, and working together to really understand the needs of our customers and in delivering value and leveraging technology to help improve the way we perform our processes and allow our people to, to do the job that they were um, hired to do. So, you know, in that sense of partnership is why we're here today with, with the Procore team. And we're gonna tell our story of our journey, our short journey with uh, Procore, and uh, Frank's gonna kick us off. So what we really wanted to do was talk through kind of our typical approach of how we look at either new technology or some sort of a new software application that we want to pull into Mortensen. That approach realistically is partnering with vendors, partnering with our ITS group, and really looking at things beyond just technology. We don't like to buy software. We really like to try and see how we can get that to work within our processes. So let's go ahead and flip to the next slide, if we will. This is the timeline of our um, kind of our, our approach, our initiative look with Procore. The, the timeline itself is important to just show how quickly we, get, we started um, the process and how we got to our, the enterprise agreement. Along the way, we kind of looked at um, requirements. We looked at what we needed to, to improve in the field. And we also needed to look and say, you know, how do we do this a little bit differently than we have in the past to get to um, where we want it to be from a uh, company perspective? <clears throat> so the first thing we needed to do is we really needed to understand some of the pain points that we had in the field from our project teams. And, and the way we looked at that was, you know, let's, let's interview project teams, let's try and understand where that pain might be so that when, when we go to look at something new, we're not just looking at the same things. We're not asking the question of, do they have RFIs? Do they have submittals? That, at some point, that's table stakes. So we really wanted to get in and say, okay, so we, 
we knew we had kind of this poor team member experience. We knew that we had a poor customer experience. We knew that we were, um, our system was expensive to maintain, and we wanted to kind of get past some of those things. We knew that we had a lack of mobility. We had to somehow get to a solution that allowed us to take our information that we put into the system and have that at the point of work, not at the point of our desk. And that was, once we started asking those questions, the project team started giving us those answers. Go ahead. So in terms of, once we identified what the problems were, we got to people to say, these are the things that is broken, and we need you guys to help us fix it. We started to do a root cause analysis to understand what, what's, what's, what are the key problems in a project management solution? Well, a project management solution, any solution, needs to be driven around the contract requirements, right? The drawings, the specification, the 2D information, the 3D information, all the things that the customer has and the design teams have collected for us to then go build. We have to build our processes around that. So RFIs, submittals, the key processes we perform for project management. Um, and then we go out and we, we buy some solution. We buy a tool um, to really help us manage issues. And the core of issue management relies on the process and relies on their contract documents so this way we can manage our risk. So when, when we went out and bought this tool back in I don't know, 2010 or whatever it was. Five years ago. Um, it was an on-premise solution, like most of the solutions back then. And uh, we had custom integrations. We're engineers. We like to over-engineer stuff. <laughs> and I'll keep my language PC. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, and we also build these custom links and, and integrations that made it super complex um, uh, in the back end, but we try to make it simple for our teams to use. Well, the reality is um, what really happened was the cloud came, right? And mobile devices came. And that added a whole nevel, new level of complexity to the problem. The solutions we bought didn't really support you know, systems in the cloud or, or mobile devices. So what happened? Well, the field spoke, right? What happened was they found an app, and that app, so we had like, you know, lots of apps, and it goes to hundreds of apps, and from hundreds of apps, it went to thousands of apps, you know, and then it was no bueno, because what happened was <laughs> all we, our, our field team started trying to innovate and connect these, these apps together. We had multiple repositories. We had waste piling up in our system, and what, what happened? our field team were suffering. They were suffering because they were trying to get the technology to work and not focused on the core business, not focused on the things, managing people, managing process, helping drive value to our customers. It's a really awkward conversation to tell someone that their innovation is waste, right? <laughs> when, they're, when they're trying to innovate and they're trying to do good, and you say, but that's really wasteful. And then they come back and say, but you've given me something that realistically doesn't work as well as it should. And that was part of our, kind of the dawn of us start, starting to think, well, maybe we need to start looking at some different solutions and cr kind of come and, and, and have this idea of, let's create, let's think about and then create a new approach. And that new approach was realistically, we wanted to do this with um, kind of some lean methodologies. We wanted to ask the questions of, what do you need? What can we provide you that would be better than, say, sitting in a room and, and saying, oh, these are the, the ideas that we think they need at the, at the job site. And by asking those questions, we started to really get the, to the heart of the problem. We need to have a, collaborate, a collaborative document system that allows people to put information into this PMA system, but then be able to use it out there at the job site. And we wanted to have that so that our, our we'll call it our occasional users, our trade partners, our design partners, our customer, they have access into the system as well. And they don't need 30 hours of training in order to see an RFI or to respond to it. That they could do that just from opening up a system, looking at it, and moving it forward. Once we started thinking about that a little bit differently, again, from a, from a lean perspective, then we just needed to create how we were going to do that, which would have, been, again, been different than we've, you know, than we've done before, which led Rick and I to have a lot of, uh, we'll call it heart-to-heart -heart conversations with our senior <laughs> management, that we're going to do something different, and we're going to do something on the benefit for our project teams. And that's what led us to um, kind of the, the next go round, which was our requirements. The, the one thing I want to add to this is on the upper right corner, you see dates. So oh, sorry. You'll, you'll see the dates move by, and the different colors correspond to the dates. And you'll see the speed at which some of these things happen. And granted, this 
4,000 people in the organization trying to make decisions for that large community is not an easy task. But with this new methodology, we'll, we're able to accomplish that. Yes. So realistically, we, we started looking at what are those requirements that we need to have. Let's go, and again, let's go beyond we need RFIs. Let's go beyond we need submittals. And we started really looking at you know, what, what boiled down to all these conversations with project team members as to these eight uh, requirements. The ones on your left, right, the ones with the asterisks <laughs> were the ones that were, were got to have. So we, we thought, if, if, once we start looking at new solutions, if it doesn't have these components, then we're going to pull it off the table and not do any more um, investigation. So which, out of the box functionality, um, I, I am an engineer, so I don't want to denigrate how we over engineer things like my <laughs> friend here. But we do, and we try and take things and, and maybe sometimes take them a bridge too far. And so we wanted some out of the box functionality. We didn't want to have to try and build something that would take a year before we got to something that was viable for our project teams. We needed something that was simple and intuitive. We already talked about, or I talked about the, our trade partners and our design partners, and we wanted something that they could just get into and then start using and, and have that, um, as Tui called it, um, time to value. We call it time to productivity, getting people that they know what to do when they open up the system rather than step one is you gotta go to a two hour training. And then collaboration. We wanted collaboration for everybody, not just internal, not just us. Um, one of uh, the, our major issues from um, our existing solution was the fact that it, it really just was us working with ourselves, not engaging with our trade partners and our design partners and, I mean, heaven forbid, let the customer into the system. So <laughs> the last bullet point was the most important one and the one that got, um, we'll just say, overwhelmingly, when we asked people this question, it was almost like vitriol. It was almost the yelling at us. We need mobile solutions. We needed something that was able to take into the field. We needed something that could be used on a phone. Um, and so from that perspective, you know, th this is kind of how we started looking at how do we start engaging with people rather than sending out you know, a 100-page RFP asking for, tell us what you can do. We started looking at what they could show us and what they could tell us in either demos or um, live meetings. It, it was fun. I, I like, I'm a troublemaker. I'm the disruptor, right? So, and instead of setting out the RFP process, we said, no, we're gonna call the software companies and we're gonna put them on the spot and ask them these questions and see what they say. And if we feel confident that they, they can meet some of these key requirements, then we'll set up a meeting, not before. No yeah, one's you, gonna sell me something and sell me yeah, you, so, a lie. You can, already, you can already see, like, uh, just, uh, just in this last 10 or 15 minutes, Rick is the, he's the optimist, he's running, everything works and, we're, and, it's, and he's gonna find the next great thing. And then I'm right behind him saying, let's figure out how this all works before we start buying. Let's, let's figure it out first. Yeah. So, and that's the dynamic that we have that really worked as we went through this. Yeah. So uh, once we defined our requirements, and we define the questions in which we'll drive success, we needed to define the outcomes. What does success look like? What are the outcomes that our team members need to experience so this way we can show the ROI? You know, whatever that investment was, we needed to prove that out before we even started the investigation. So we said the times of productivity, to we, you know, the time to value. We, we had documented you know, over 48 hours the time of productivity in our existing solution. That's six days, that could be over two or three weeks. And you know, training needs to be just in time. If you train on something and then someone waits a week or two weeks before they actually implement it, there's a loss of knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, so we said we have to improve that process by 75%. You know, how we got that number? Well, it's not very scientific, but it's a target, right? That's why it's called a target improvement. Then we looked at the over-processing in our system. Right? Having multiple data repositories trying to connect that information to get it down to a mobile device on some other app um, drove a lot of over-processing in, in, our, in our system. So we needed to eliminate that. And what we said was, if every team member who needs to get out in the field with a mobile device to access the latest information, if we can reduce one hour of that team member's um, time over-processing per day, I mean, that's millions, millions of dollars of savings to our organization. Um, and then finally, so we had two quantitative uh, outcomes, uh, targets, and then we had one qualitative. And the, the qualitative was really the user experience. We need to dramatically improve our in internal customer. Our customer 
is not our owner of the facility, it's our project teams, our superintendents, our project managers, our project engineers, our VDC people. Those are our customers. We needed to improve their experience. We needed to improve our partners' experience, our, our trades, our design partners. And most importantly, we needed access for our customers. So this way, we can uh, satisfy the entire stakeholder uh, team. So we weren't gonna bore you with much of the investigation other than obviously we're here. So that tells you something, right? Um, but we, we did look at over, or we looked at 22 uh, different solutions, big, small, um, on-prem, you know, just apps that we would, you know, see if we could just kind of bring things together and cobble together a solution. And then it, it was pretty clear, pretty fast, that Procore was something that we needed to look into a little bit deeper. So what we started with was three demonstration projects. And those three demonstration projects, we said we've got three months and we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna hit it hard and we're gonna fig figure out if we can take this to the next level, take it to an enterprise agreement. Now all of this Rick is excited for because it's fast. <laughs> I'm nervous, right? This is, the engineer in me is saying, you know, we gotta, we gotta look at something or slow this down. But we looked at these five core PMA processes and, and said, okay, we need, it needs to do these five things for us to be successful. And what we quickly found out was that there was one of those five solutions didn't meet our needs. Now, issue management for Mortensen is a little bit different than um, what other people call issue management. For us, it's how do we track cost and schedule impacts when something occurs on the project site. So that it doesn't have to be negative. It doesn't have, issue doesn't have to be negative. It's just how do we track that information so that we can give our customer in a very timely fashion the ability to either choose yes or no with whatever that uh, change might be. So I brought this up to um, our contacts at Procore and I said, we gotta have this. this th we need to have something. And, and um, Mark had said, well, you, we just happen to be building something um, that I think would work for you. Now, immediately I'm skeptical, right? I've heard vaporware and I've heard, you know, it'll be in the next release um, from enough software to know that I, in, until somebody proves me wrong or proves that they can do it, I, I'm gonna be skeptical. So Mark said he'll, that he, he, he wagered a beer and said that we would, that they would, Procore would prove me wrong. I said, great, let's do it. So I got, the beta, my, me and my team got the beta for what is the change events module on a Monday. We tested on Tuesday, we gave our gotta haves on Wednesday. By Saturday of that week, that weekend, four of the gotta haves were fixed. And so I thought, this is great, Monday morning, we'll test those out. By the time we got to testing on Monday, the other four were fixed. So we tested all day Monday, gave the response back on Tuesday, had a meeting on Wednesday, in the process of 10 working or 10, 10 calendar days, we were able to go from, nah, we, we can't move forward to, we're, we're moving forward, this looks fantastic, it hits all five of our things. That is something that, that little story um, is something that resonated with our senior management. Because all of these great decisions that you have, these big decisions and companies, are built on these little stories. And that story alone said this was a company that was looking at what the, what the construction industry needed, they were moving fast, and that realistically they were responsive. Several things that we hadn't seen in some of our legacy systems. And so that really made us want to start thinking about how do we get to the next level with Procore. The demonstration projects were going great, they were hitting everything that we need. So that led us to realistically having this leadership meet and greet, which where we brought um, Tui and Steve um, and met with our um, leadership team to really talk about, you know, how do we do this faster than we've ever had an enterprise deal go before? And realistically, after that, after that meeting, we more or less had a, uh, a agreement to let's go. And so all of that between the 90 days of demonstration projects to contract negotiations was literally somewhere between 75 and 90 days. And we, again, as we tried to we'll just say, uh, change the ways of the old RFP process, we thought to ourselves, this is, this is the way to do it. Let's go and tell people 
show us what, what you can do versus having them come back. And it, has, it really worked, especially in this case with Procore. Yeah. It's a new paradigm. So one of the <laughs> things that we, we have a far superior customer experience uh, motto, if you will, at Mortensen. And so when Mark Sherry had met with the leadership of Procore, he, he just, it was one of those things where he just said, this is, this is for us. This leadership team gets the way we want to view um, the project from a, a customer standpoint. And it really worked um, on all levels for us. Yeah. And, and I think um, one of the things that we were really excited about was, you know, we, we, when, it's funny, when Mark, Mark and Shelby, rock star account um, person, is helping us um, prepare for implementation, we're like, we got this. When we roll stuff out, we roll it out. And they're like, all right, we'll, we'll see. I said, all right, you will see. Yeah, what, um, yeah so. what, what we'd warned them was, uh, and this is, a, this is a blessing and a curse, when Mortensen jumps in and we jump in with two feet, um, there's no, let's just roll it out to a couple people. Let's, we're going to, if people, if we're going to go, we're going to go. Yeah. So, and so, Rick's going to show yeah. um, how we went and how I had a few sleepless nights. Because again, <laughs> um, yeah. 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 So December 22nd, we signed a contract. Um, and then we, you know, we told our teams, we prepared the, our teams in terms of what we're going to be measuring, why we're going to be measuring, um, and expect us to be fully engaged. Well, we thought it was going to be a pretty slow rollout. So after eight weeks, um, 73 projects last week, while we were here, and our PMA team is here, um, they signed up five projects, four projects while they were here. Um, five. Five projects. So um, what we're showing in this animation here is we basically took all of the Procore content that was already created and just basically linked it into our internal Mortensen portal. So you know, I'm sure a lot of you have gone through large implementations before and how much work and effort it was to put together the material and organize training and scheduling and trying to travel around wherever it is to, to get to the projects, it's painful. Well, we didn't have to do any of that. The documentation, the training, the videos all, were all there, and we were, we were able to, to basically link to that information. I had the scars of four different implementations, um, and so that was what was making me nervous rolling into this one, especially knowing Mortensen and how we jump in. Um, and I can just say that I'm sleeping fine now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's been great. And, and, and it, the communication plan, get your business leaders to buy in. I, Communicate the, the deployment strategy with them. Define measures. Let them know what we're going to be measuring and, and get them to buy in. Then communicate to the project teams. Communicate to the business units that are going to be implementing the, the technology. Drive expectations. Don't ask. We're driving expectations. And we're trying to help them. And they, they define a problem. And here is a solution. Uh, and then we define our pipeline for schedule for projects across the, the year based on our, um, you know, opportunity list, and then finally, we develop the content and we define the, uh, the deployment strategy. So um, it's, been, it's been going really well. Eight weeks is not a long time, so um, more to come. But in terms of the metrics, the adoption, it's all about the people. If we can't get people to leverage the solutions to drive the consistent process, we're not going to be innovative. You know, we, we hear like, oh, we're innovative, we're innovative. Innovation only happens through standardization of process. If, if you have your project teams doing whatever they want to do and picking the solutions they want to pick, you're never going to um, drive innovation at the company level. You may drive innovation at the project level, but driving adoption with a deployment or an enterprise solution is critical for success and innovation. So the, the metrics show six, over 670 people in the system. You can see the, the, the different breakdown. We're tracking our five, key, key, five PMA processes, and it's broken down by module. So we, we called up Procore and said, hey, we need some of this data. And like in an hour, we got the data. And it was great, because we were able to show internally who is using the, the modules. If we can get a full adoption internally, and then you know, understanding how our trades and designers are using it, we can, we can show the, prove the ROI. The other aspect is our enterprise solution needed to support the enterprise, not just commercial buildings, not just you know, one type. So 90% in eight weeks. This solution is already covering 90% of our markets. Um, there's one or two that are not in the system yet, but I'm sure in the next couple of weeks we'll, we'll hit 100%. That's really important. 
in terms of driving adoption and improving the ROI for an enterprise solution. Um, in terms of the, the three key outcomes that we're looking for, after eight weeks, we're already showing a 90% improvement to our time to value or time to productivity. We showed a 48 hour, you know, up to productivity um, in our last PMA solution. Uh, with Procore, we're showing five hours. Five hours. We have people not even taking training and starting submittals and starting the process. And that in itself defines success for us, right? Imagine having a new set of team members. We've, we hired 500 team members in Utah for a number of solo projects. And imagine applying that metric 48 hours to time to value. And our productivity rates were incredibly high uh, uh, on, on those projects. We, we, we would not do well. Um, so the, all of these are in progress, obviously. Um, we're going to be tracking these across the, uh, the next uh, 12 months. But, um, the, the, the reduction in over-processing, we started doing tack time analysis on our RFI process for our existing solution and Procore. So we're seeing a 35% improvement right off the bat. Well, that really means how many steps it takes to go through an RFI process, eliminating the waiting and some of the other um, steps that we have no control over. So just in terms of clicks, you know, there's a 35% improvement. In submittals, there's a 15% improvement. So as we go through each module and start tracking the, and doing our analysis, we're gonna to get to that one hour in no time. The other aspect of it is we're reducing our repositories. We don't have, we're not gonna have five or six repositories where team members are trying to move data just to get it down on a mobile device. It's all going through the system. So those are the opportunities that we're seeing already. And then finally, the, the qualitative, we, um, we're, we're getting pages and pages of quotes and testimonials from our design partners, our trade partners. They're like, hey, this is great. I love submittals, hey, this is great. It's 10 times better than our last solution. Hey, this is great. And it's like, but tell me what's wrong. Tell, it's got to be something wrong with this damn thing. <laughs> yeah. But um, again, eight weeks. But it's amazing the, the type of feedback we're getting. We're getting calls from project teams saying, hey, I got to get my, this system. We started this project a month ago, but I will manually transfer the stuff over if you just let me in a system. So instead of calling us to say, hey, things broken, they're calling us and saying, hey, I, I want in. So that's a huge transformation in terms of behavior, and that's exciting for us. So in terms of at Mortensen, um, we have two methodologies for innovation. One is enhancing today, which is looking at today and tomorrow, and that's really Frank's domain. Yes. And then creating the future, which is looking out with R&D and research five to 10 years, and that's where um, I come in. So yeah. <laughs> so right now, our, with our partnership focus with Procore, and, and I don't think if we mentioned it or not, but we, we don't necessarily like to just buy software. We really wanted to look at it from a partnership perspective and how can we partner with the, the vendor to make our um, solutions better and to make so that they understand that they have a partner in us. So these are the four things that we're really looking at from a partnership perspective with uh, Procore. And some of the stuff you've already seen, we've already talked about, this is on their roadmap, not just ours but file sharing and, and, and collaboration. You guys go down to the innovation lab, you can see some really cool stuff that they're doing with uh, Procore Drive and how they're working on sync, making sync work. The drawing and spec automation, I think some of you are probably already testing that out. We're, we think that's fantastic. We think that's um, a, a tremendous step in the right direction from a lean perspective to try and take some of those tasks that are just, that need to be automated and put those into the solution so that we don't have to do it. And then, you know, the idea of inspections and checklists and trying to get that to the point where we realistically love the idea of having checklists, inspections, and having the observations to it, which, which I got a preview, which is fantastic, and having that tied to the PMA solution so you can very easily go to, this needs to go to either an RFI or a notification, or get it right to a change event because there's some sort of a cost or schedule impact. So we just think that's fantastic, getting all that stuff tied together. Um, and, and then really the, the future state or looking at the technology convergence, there's a couple of key areas we're researching right now and we're really excited about them and we're really excited to bother the Procore people to, to kind of get, get involved in it. So obviously integrating BIM is, a, is an important part. Um, you know, helping us improve the digital fabrication and our prefab strategies on our projects, the PMA system has to be able to support that because you're managing trade, you're managing suppliers, all of those pieces need to be connected in an in, in, in a interdependent system. Um, wearable technologies, it's funny. My introduction to Procore 
was in like 2012 or when I, I was searching, I doing some research on Google Glass and I saw a video. And it was a Procore video. I'm like, who's Procore? And uh, they, were, they were showing a little video on how they were using the Google Glass and, uh, uh, for an RFI process or something. And I was like, hey, Frank, have you seen this? He was like, yeah, we've been tracking those guys for a couple years now. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, kind of a, I don't know if I should say this or not, but I mean, we're all friends here, right? The doors are closed. <laughs> We started taking Procore videos and sending them out to some of our existing legacy solutions and saying, hey, can you do this? Have you seen this? This looks awesome. We want this to happen in our system. Um, and needless to say, yeah. It, yeah. Again, we're here. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, as we wrap up, you know, we just wanted to say it's been a great experience um, with the Procore team, and we're really excited. I mean, we don't just go and buy software. We invest in organizations to partner to dr drive value in the industry. It's not about just us getting better because as a company gets better, they only get better because of the, they're working with trades and design partners. They, we have to get better as a community. So our goal is to make the industry better. And you know, this partnership is the beginning. And, uh, and that's what we have. So thank you.